Back in the early 1960s, performance was becoming a very important part of all the manufacturers, especially at General Motors. And the Vanguard automobile for them during that period for performance was the Corvette. They decided to take their venerable small block engine, V8, that, was to, that came out in 1955, and really start from scratch. And it ended up being what was called the Mark IV program, really a completely different engine, much physically larger, with a, with a displacement of 427 cubic inches, which was right up against the uh, engine size limit that various racing sanctioning bodies had adopted. The Mark IV program was about, you know, better flowing heads, which meant more power. And, you know, then they went to the 396s and 427 motors. 427 engine was 425 horsepower, had a Holley double-ended carburetor, you know, high compression heads, and it put out a lot of power. And it looked totally different from anything anybody had ever seen, the way the head was made. And everybody thought, I've got to have one of those. What's unique about this pilot car is that the very first big block that went into a 65 Corvette was a 427. There was only one of two pre-production cars, pilot cars, that was fitted with a 427 cubic inch engine used for all kinds of testing. And even more unbelievable is this car was actually sold in 1966 with a 427 in it and it survived all these years later, now fully restored back to its New York show car quality by the neighbor brothers. This is the only one that has a, a changed interior. It's got parts that weren't available on any of the other cars. And it's, you know, the earliest one built. And it, it's, a, it's a striking car with the color combination. The color, that is a Cadillac color, not a Corvette color. People look at it and say, oh, I never saw a Corvette that color. Well, no, you didn't, because it is a Cadillac paint job, if you will. This car was just a joy to do. It was a lot of fun. You have to look at the car, and once you start looking at the car and look at all the things that are different, it was basically a handmade car. They took another car and changed it to be this. But it's a neat car. I don't, I don't know what there's not to like about it. It has a teak steering wheel. That was first offered in 1965. Side exhaust, another 1965 debut for those which were added at the factory, not afterwards. It's got knockoff wheels on the car, which obviously add to the visual appeal of the car. It has an AM FM radio, power windows, and of course this was the first year for disc brakes. This is the first 1965 Corvette to receive the disc brake setup. Just when you think you've seen it all in the Corvette collecting world, so many rare high profile cars, L88s and Z06s and race cars and more, a car comes out of almost nowhere that shocks everybody. This 1965 pilot car, the fact that it has survived all of these years later as an ironclad example of one of the most important Corvettes in history, paving the way for over 40,000 427 Corvettes built as a production car from 1966 to 1969, fully expected to bring a lot of money and attract a lot of attention. When you talk to Corvette collectors, one of the things that seems to drive them when they're assembling their collection they want to have something that nobody else has. has so many firsts that are associated with this car, and yet a lot of those things that this car boasts, you won't find on other Corvette pilot cars from that same period. So when you own this car, you literally do have a one-of-a-kind Corvette, and for a Corvette collector, it doesn't get any better than that.